What's going on guys, Brian's here. Today is Thursday, February 13th, 2025, and we had an impeccable bounce on the ES right off of this week's point of control. There were clues of this momentum building in the volume profile for the ES this week, as well as some clues on gamma exposures, so the SPY 0DTE, the SPX 0DTE, and even this week's weekly expiration, which is tomorrow's expiration gamma profile. And if we have time in this video, we'll get to some of these advanced metrics in a bit. On top of all this easy to see information, earlier this year, I released a video on how to predict price action for beginners. And in that video, I talked about something very important, which is paying attention to the nature of these candlesticks. When we see massive pin bar candles and massive wicks off of these candles, it is painting a picture of who is being more aggressive. This is important at key strike prices. In this day trading example, I was using the Qs, but if I remember correctly, the Qs ended up bouncing from this 506 level all the way up to the next key major gamma exposure level, which is 520. That is a strong bounce that a trader can anticipate. One of the key ingredients that I mentioned in that video is this type of characteristic with price action. As we take a look at some of the price action overnight, look at the nature of these candlesticks right here. We can see that there is pressure building. If we take a look at the intraday chart on the SPY, which is, might be a little bit easier to see, I recommend the 15 minute time frame. The 30 minute time frame, which is what we were just looking at is even better, but for the most part, the 15 minute time frame is adequate enough. Look at the nature of these candlesticks in this area. 605 is a key area on the SPY, which even if you don't use gamma exposure, it's pretty apparent to see. Look at the price action around this area of 605. Before we even get too in depth in just today, let's dial it back to the start of this week because this is Sunday nights here, so 11.50 p.m. Eastern time. This is the third Sunday in a row with a gap down. This is some clues that is being presented to us before the week even started. So if we zoom out, this is this week, this is last week, and this is three weeks ago, and then this would be four weeks. The markets gapped down, and then we had a nasty sell-off, right? Then what did we have last week? The market gapped down. This week, the market also gapped down. The futures market opens at 6 p.m. Eastern time. What was different is if we take a look at these point of control, so this point of control, this point of control, and this point of control, look what happened as the market gapped down. It took days for it to retrace back to the previous week's point of control. The market gapped down, and it took days for it to retrace back up to the previous week's point of control. This Sunday, the market gapped down, and before the market even opened on Monday, it was already above the previous week's point of control. That is a break in the pattern. So this is the third Sunday in a row with a gap down that was bought up. Each gap down was progressively less. And this was the first one out of the three Sundays that is already above Friday's close before the market even opens. Interesting that we're also back above last week's point of control. So this is before the market even opened this Monday. What I'm addressing here is this point of control, it was interesting that in the after hours session on Sunday night, futures market opens here, 6 p.m. Eastern time. A couple hours later, we're up here, which is above the previous week's point of control. That was the first break in the pattern that showed bears were losing some steam and some bullish momentum was building. Or at least that is the way I interpreted this. What I meant also is that each gap down was becoming less severe with less follow through. If we take a look at this right here, look at that gap down and massive selling pressure. Look at this gap down and selling pressure. Then look at this gap down and selling pressure. It was almost non-existence in relation to these two. This was much less. So in other words, bears are very strong here. Bears have a little bit of strength here. And now it looks like they're just getting tired here. As traders, it's important to take this type of information and carry it forward because it might apply to a trade later in the week. The volume profile on the futures is quintessential to a technical analysis trader. This thinkorswim script is available for free, by the way, in the description of this video. Now fast forward into the week, we have this week's point of control, which was an area that was interesting to take a short of, which is something that I actually took. So if we just scroll down, just to show you guys using the volume profile here, this is the value area low. There was a scalp with confluence, so just highlighting the different levels uh, of confluence. But that's not what this video is about here. So here we have the next short I'm willing to take is, a re is if the uh, market is rejected at this week's point of control. So this is before the markets got back up to this point of control here. 
I set I set an alert on my chart. It did not trigger as the market did not go that high yesterday. However, in the afternoon session here, so this is almost 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, my alert went off. So I'm on my computer about 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. I power back up Thinkorsim, and then I decide to run a put debit spread, essentially looking to short the markets back down to 60.70. I was just answering a trader's question why I chose this. It's late at night. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Pretty much just saying, hey, just give me a few of those contracts for 10 bucks. It's something very easy to calculate risk off of. I made it a debit spread because I was holding the position overnight and it was a good way for me to head to bed without being too concerned with too much margin at risk overnight. And what do we think happens from there? If we power this up here, we see the market sells off. Where do we go? Right down to the value area low of the volume profile, which is essentially 6070. I was not up around three something in the morning to close out this trade. So I ended up closing it around 815 or so this morning, pre-market Eastern time. Look at the nature of these candlesticks. This is not a put trade I want to hold because I can see who's building up right here. I can see the pressure. I can see the bulls putting up a strong fight. I already know at the start of the week that beers are pretty exhausted just based off of back here. This is another area for them to be pretty tired. You can almost think of it as a boxing match. I made a video years ago in this volume profile playlist. At this point, you can consider this a free volume profile course. These videos are all available on YouTube. And if I remember correctly, it was covered in this video right here. So price action, psychology and market profile. I highly recommend you guys check out this entire series, but this video is the one that I'm specifically talking about when addressing who's getting tired on what side of the volume profile. Now, fast forward later in the day and we see what happens. An explosive move happens here. So obviously I'm very happy to have closed out any short positions here. I happen to take a short here back down to this POC because there was confluence with some of the quant trading app tools. Link to quant trading app is in the description down below. By the way, if you'd like to learn anything about the tools available to quant trading app traders. So the market retraces to this POC. Here's the trend line addressing. So here's one reason for potential short. Volume profiles thin, just addressing that's not particularly a reason to short by itself. I'm seeing some divergence in the ADD, seeing some divergence in the tick here. So the market's going up. These things are going down. Already loving this. Take the short trade. This is a quant trading app script here. So the queues are at the weekly resistance levels. So if technology stocks are at a potential resistance level, I'm also going to think the market is going to pull back. On top of that, we can already see that the SPY is also at a quant trading app intraday level in this case here it is it is a level i would expect the markets to pull back to vwap because there is context and there's confluence around this you guys see how it started with a larger approach this is a trend line from the es dialing it down looking for additional reasons then we're looking under the hood looking at some market internals like the add the tick trying to see what these things are saying are they in confluence with the spy in this case they were not so i decided to take a short trade however where do we get right down to the POC, massive rejection right at VWAP. Here it is larger, this week's POC, here's VWAP. Close out your short trades. Sit back now and see what new clues does the market present to us to take another trade or not. At this point in the day, my schedule is pretty chaotic as I've had a few meetings. However, earlier in the morning, I had already made the plan that I was going to open up a non-directional trade, essentially banking that the market would make an outsized move in the afternoon. This is early in the day, so this is well before this happens here. Knowing I'm going to be in a few meetings, I'm just planning to run a 0DTE or 1DTE strangle around noon Eastern time, just addressing my thoughts or plans regarding how I'm going to structure the trade as I'm not looking to be that fancy. Trade ends up working out pretty well, so let me just show you guys here. This is it at close. There's some data supporting why this trade is pretty good on a Thursday, but this is around a 10 delta strangle. If I remember correctly, the put was a 10 delta. The calls were around a point, uh, 12 delta or so. So very cheap options, buying a put, buying a call, and I didn't want to put that much capital in the trade. So I short a put, short a call, and that's what creates this inverse iron condor or reverse iron condor, whichever you want to call it. Pretty much expecting the market to make a large move in either direction. All the clues are pointing that we are going to go up. However, my internal bias or my my internal convictions at this point is not that the market is going to go higher. I have reasons for wanting the market to go down more specifically because I have liquidated most of my long-term assets last year as I'm expecting some sort of correction during Trump's administration. And I would love to scale back into the markets on the next proper correction. I don't want to be adding to a long-term portfolio as the market is consolidating and hovering around all-time highs. I might regret that this year or next year or so as no one knows if the market is going to correct itself or not, but that is my personal conviction and bias right now. So I'm trading to the long side cautiously, but not ignoring the signs. 
I can want to short the market all I want. I can want a 5 or 10% correction all I want, but the clues are right here. Bulls are strong to start off this week. Bulls are defending the value area low. Bulls are defending retracements, 50% retracements. Bulls are defending 50% retracements. Bulls are defending key strikes. Trump was on the calendar to speak today. I didn't have any ears or eyes on the news, so I have no idea what was said around here, but we know there was a catalyst for today, and we can see where does this price action start to show signs of momentum building to the upside again, right after it breaks out and it retests. This is the intraday VWAP. If we zoom out as a technician, it's very easy to spot. This is a bull flag forming, right? So price goes up, it comes back, it consolidates. Once it breaks, it goes up. One of my favorite videos that I've ever done was back in 2021, and it is under the price action playlist. It is the first video in that playlist, and it is why does the break and retest strategy work so well? In that video, I talk about this type of consolidation and then a breakout and a retest. Look at the nature of the candlesticks on the retest, right? This is by far one of my favorite trading strategies to use. It is very beginner friendly. Taking a look at the recent price action for the markets, if we were to draw a zone around this whole area here, as we can see that this is where the market has been choppy in this range, as we can see right here, it has been struggling around this 606 and this 605. So even if we just drew a rectangle around this area here, this in a sense is seen as some sort of supply zone. It has acted as some sort of resistance, very apparent to see on the chart. What happens when the market breaks out of a range and it retests the range? As it consolidates at that retest, we can expect it to break out. We can take a look at just this week's price action, for example. I'm just drawing the rectangle around these areas right here as we can see these are all the areas of supply every time the market came up to this area this is monday this is tuesday this is wednesday and then this is thursday here today it struggled here it struggled here it struggled here it struggled here yesterday it almost came back up to the zone it struggled today it finally breaks out through the zone and it comes back to the zone and look at the pressure that builds up here as it pushes off this is textbook price action, textbook trading, but it's not just about the technicals. A major point of a lot of my videos is I try to layer a lot of different ways to view price action as well as what's happening at the market. A technician, a supply and demand trader can easily see this. Someone that just trades technical patterns can see the bull flag, but there's another person that doesn't know how to identify bull flags. People that trade VWAP understand what happens with momentum on a retest of VWAP. People that read candlesticks understand the characteristics of this. People that read level two, people that read the time in sales menu, can understand what's going on here as they can see it on the tape. Traders that use volume profile understand these high volume nodes, understand the point of control, understand the break and the retest of that point of control. News-based traders understand the volatility that comes around trading when Trump is speaking, when Powell is speaking, during the FOMC announcements, during a CPI report, understand the type of price action around this expected volatility. Traders also understand from compression comes expansion. The market has been in a very tight range over the past few weeks as we can see right here look at how tight this volume profile is if we just drew a line right between here these POCs are not that far from each other this POC is this close to this one this close to this one and this close to this one these POCs are all grouped up this is a pretty tight range for the past few weeks we have some additional data that supports on Thursdays into Fridays and Fridays volatility has expanded or the range for the SPX has expanded expanded over the past 14 weeks, pretty much around the beginning of November, right around elections time. There isn't time to get in depth in the gamma exposure for today, but I might as well just show you guys this here. This is the SPY. Let's just jump to around a midday profile. So right around here, this is a 12 p.m. Eastern time. We can see that the key strike for the zero DT is 608 with 610 being right where the positive gamma falls off. If we take a look, where does the SPY go today? It breaks out, it comes back, it retests the 605 level before it breaks out and goes up to 610. Let's take a look at the SPX. Again, there isn't much time to get into details of this. You guys can check out my Gamma Exposure playlist in, in which I cover a lot of how to interpret this, but this is middle of the day. Let's jump forward, let's just jump forward, jump forward. We can see this calling out 
price action like a saw thumb. That's 6,095, breaks out, the market breaks 6,100. Look at where the gamma exposure profile ends, right there at 610. That is where there is a lot of positive gamma, I should say. The market ends up stalling out right around there. How about for tomorrow? This is the SBX for tomorrow's expiration. What's it looking like around the middle of the day? This is 1 p.m. Eastern time. We can see a lot of volume coming into this 150 strike. We can see a lot of positive gamma. A lot of signs at this point are pointing towards the north side. This is just gamma exposure. We have volume profile. We have the technical analysis, like, tech like the technical patterns. We have VWAP to help us. So take a look at the SPX. This is a key gamma strike right here for tomorrow, 6075. This was calculated from pre-market. It's saying this is the absolute gamma strike for the weekly expiration, which is tomorrow. SPX breaks out, hits the quant trading app intraday zone, retraces to this area here. So here goes our bull flag, gets bought up, pushes higher, goes towards the key gamma strikes of 95, also 100, and then 150 as a potential target for tomorrow. We also had the context of this trend line, technical analysis trader. You guys see how this is all layered. I'm rambling at this point. Hopefully this video helps guys. There's so much clues right now. When you understand how to layer this information, sit back, wait for price to hit your key levels. And more importantly, look at the nature of the type of candlesticks that form around your key levels. If you can be a little patient and wait for price to get to your levels instead of trying to speculate or guess or, or try to predict all the time, trading can become a lot easier, especially if you become pickier and you really narrow it down in terms of trying to only take the trades when you have a firm understanding of what's going on with price action because multiple things that you use are creating a greater context for yourself and improves your conviction. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if you're new here. Like the video if you learned something and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.